Today we have got one of my favorite judge promos ever. We have got some reserve list cards and potentially the best token in the history of magic. Let's jump in. What is going on everybody and welcome back to the collection series. This is the series where we are working to fill up a binder with just some of my favorite cards, the cards that I love to collect over time. Now, a few weeks ago, we initiated this challenge, and as part of that, I'm inviting each and every one of you to take part in the collection series with me by picking a binder of your choice, filling it up with cards that you happen to enjoy, and sharing your stories as to why you enjoy those cards in the comment section below. Now, before we jump in, I do want to remind you there is no limit to what you have to collect. It can be anything. It can be one card that you collect as many times as you want. It does not matter. The fun thing about this is collecting is to the individual. It's for the individual. And so for you, your collection might look vastly different than the cards that we're collecting. However, I want to share those experiences with everybody. Now, like I said, we did start a binder a few weeks ago, and we are using the 480 card 12 pocket binder from Ultra Pro, which means today we are going to be looking at another 12 cards added to the binder. Now, at the very end, we'll look at the percentage of the binder that we have filled up, as well as the total value of the binder so far as we have added cards to it. Like I said, though, guys, we've got a ton of awesome cards to look at today, so let's go ahead. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, so like I said, we've got a lot of awesome cards. We've got reserve lists. We've got old stuff. We have also got some new promos and one of my favorite tokens of all time. I think we're actually going to start with just a couple of vintage cards, though. First of which we have got, boom, Shimian Nightstalker. This is from Legends, so it is just an old school creature. There is no like massive value for this guy, uh, but uh, for three and two black, you do get a little four four and you can use its ability one or uh, black excuse me and tap it redirect all damage done to you from any one attacking creature to the Shimian Nightstalker. So you can use it to kind of save yourself a little bit. Uh, but truthfully, the reason I get cards like this is just because they are old and really cool. The art is unique. We don't get this kind of art anymore. A lot of it is obviously computer generated, which has its own benefits. Let me be very clear. I actually really love some of the latest artwork that we've been getting. However, there's something to that old school feel that I just feel is really unique and really special. And so, uh, like I said, this is just one of those pieces that really represents that. Uh, it doesn't hold a ton of value, of course, but the, the reality is it's just a cool old card. It shows how far magic has come and what we've what we started with back in the uh, 1994 days. Uh, and so it's a really special card, in my opinion, and certainly one that uh, I'm excited to add to the binder here. Love picking up old cards like this. Speaking of old cards, guys, we do have another very old school card here. Uh, this is from, I believe, Antiquities. It's Artifact Possession. Uh, and a really interesting card. So it's an Enchant Artifact for two and a black. Does two damage to Target Artifact's controller each time Target Artifact is tapped or its activation cost is paid. Has no effect if cast on uh, a continuous artifact. So interesting wording there. Obviously, things have probably changed over the, the years. But uh, again, this is one that really highlights that beautiful old school artwork. And that's really why I wanted to pick this up. This doesn't have any reserve list value, anything like that. It's just a really cool looking card. Uh, and again, having it back from antiquities is just such a long time ago. Uh, it's crazy to think how far magic has come. I mean, we've been at this for over 25 years now, I believe. Uh, and it's crazy. It's really exciting to see, you know, how far the, the power creep curve has gotten for one, but also just the cards themselves. I mean, obviously these old school frames you don't see anymore. Uh, the artwork like this you don't see anymore, the wording you don't see anymore. Uh, and so this is a really special piece in my opinion and certainly one I'm happy to have in the binder. Finally, guys, we have a not so old card, but definitely one that I'm happy to have. We have actually got uh, Jaleva, Nathalia's Scourge. So this is actually just a card I never picked up. Uh, truth be told, I'm not a huge commander player, but it is something I'd like to kind of jump into. I think I talked a little bit about that actually on the last episode. Uh, and so it's kind of cool to pick these kinds of cards up just to try, just to try as a new commander player. I think it'd be a really fun opportunity. This is a 1-3 for 1 in Grixis. It's got flying. When it enters the battlefield, each player exiles the top X cards of his or her library, uh, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast her. So what's cool is as you go through the game, if, if uh, Jaleva is removed and then you add her back from the command zone, obviously you're paying that extra command tax and therefore you've got extra exile triggers on the stack here. <clears throat> uh, whenever it attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcery card exiled with it without paying its mana cost. So 
one of the big powerhouse things in commander is that you get to play some really big powerhouse cards and so uh this really takes advantage not only of your own deck but certainly of your opponents as well and i really like that aspect i love stealing stuff from the opponent i know i'm a bad player <laughs> uh but i do think it'd be really fun uh, uh to try and build a deck around Deliva. i think she'd be a really good one to try so this is certainly in my top list of uh commanders i'm going to be trying out here soon uh and again just a really nice pickup a cart that i've always wanted to try and just never had the opportunity to all right guys so now we are coming to a couple of little special cards here um i'm actually going to start with the reserve list cards these are not necessarily super high value reserve list cards but they are reserve list so i wanted to share them here we have got elvin lear here as the first one uh, this is actually from Fallen Empires, notoriously one of the worst sets in Magic's history, but um, it is an artifact for two. You can pay one, tap it, sacrifice it to give target attacking creature plus two plus two until the end of the turn. Uh, not a great card. I mean, just the reality of it is it is not a great card. But again, it shows how far we've come in the, uh, the history of Magic. And again, having that reserve list tied to it is something that I'm always going to be interested in picking up yeah there's potential long-term value for it maybe they've abolished the reserve list i have no idea but the reality is it's still just a cool card to have uh and so i'm really happy to have this here uh there is also an i don't know how well you'll be able to see this but if you can see kaja is actually the artist's name uh and so it's actually here on the the elven leer which is actually a really cool little sneak preview uh or a sneak easter egg into the artwork there but Again, just a really cool card, a uh, very old card, and love it. Love having the reserve list stuff. Now, speaking of, we do have a second reserve list card for this episode, and it's actually Cuscan Falls. Uh, two and two black for an enchant world. Again, that wording really shows how far we've come. Uh, during your upkeep, top, tap target untapped creature you control or bury Krosk. Uh, coast scan falls wow uh no creature can attack you unless its controller pays an additional two whenever that creature attacks so what's nice about this is it's actually kind of a lockdown prison card uh similar to things like ghostly prison nowadays where it sort of adds an extra tax for every attacking creature uh, again, a reserve list card, so there is some inherent value there. Uh, but the reality is I love prison cards. Again, I'm a bad player, and so uh, cards like this are really fun to pick up, in my opinion. Uh, now, the reserve list does entice me that much more, of course. Uh, most of the time, as you guys know, when I'm doing my Scryfall random picks, uh, which is how I pick a lot of these cards, uh, if I see a reserve list card and it's something I can afford to add to the binder, I usually do. Um, in general, I just think it's a fun thing to do. It's it's a nice little piece to collect, in my opinion, and add to the collection. We've actually picked up quite a few. I think there will be some more coming over the next few weeks. So uh, I am really excited to have this one in here. Again, beautiful artwork from Homelands here. Really love that old school, just a landscape artwork uh and just a really interesting card a really cool reserve list piece all right so now we are going to come to some promos and i'm actually going to get a pre-release promo out of the way first so this is the only pre-release promo that we have got this week and it's actually revenant uh from 1998 uh, really, really cool. It does have that pre-release stamp here before they had it on the artwork uh, and before the whole card was foil. We got it down here. Uh, it's four and a black for an XX. Uh, flying when uh, it's, its power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. This really spoke to me on a couple of different levels, I want to say. Uh, first and foremost, it is a pre-release promo, uh, which I'm always apt to picking up some promos. Uh, it is an older card, which again is really one of my favorites. Uh, it has beautiful uh, Teresa Nielsen art, which I do really love, and some amazing flavor text. It just says not again, uh, which I really, really love. Uh, but truthfully, this is a card that speaks to my play style in a weird way. Uh, so I love self mill decks. I love uh, just mill decks in general. Uh, and so something that I always enjoyed playing with when I first started Magic was self mill strategies, uh, where you were trying to just power out cards like this that could take advantage of cards in your graveyard. Uh, now, this is <coughs> obviously not a very good card, um, but that's not really the point. The point is that it's reminiscent and nostalgic for me, uh, and so I really love that. I'm very happy to have this. Uh, it is just a cool little piece. Not a lot of value, of course, but it's just a really nice, really beautiful card. 
great to have in the binder. All right, next we are gonna jump into, I think some of the more interesting promos, relatively newer promos as well. And we'll actually start here uh, with the Beast Tracker. So uh, this is a really cool card, actually. I didn't even know this card existed. It's a two one for three. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a creature card with Death Touch, Hexproof, Reach, or Trample, reveal it, and shuffle your library you can put that card on top of it now there's obviously a lot of better options for uh creature tutors in my opinion you've got green sun zenith you've got court of calling things like that uh however having it on a stick is kind of cool uh now there's not a whole lot of inherent value to this card after the fact but obviously being able to search up one of those keywords is actually really helpful depending on the deck you're against you might need a hexproof creature if they've got a lot of targeted removal uh, against a deck where they've got really big things, maybe you need to search out a Death Toucher just to be able to trade with it and then get in for some damage afterwards. Certainly not a card that I think is going to ever see a lot of play, but it is kind of a cool card. Uh, and again, I love promos. Uh, and so for me, what, what really drew me to this card was one, its uniqueness, but two, the beautiful artwork on this one. Look how stunning this is. That dynamic look that amazing tree behind uh and then kind of swooping from here to here just absolutely beautiful absolutely love this card um some of the the green promos in particular just have such beautiful artwork because they've got so much natural beauty in the the landscaping of green and things like that and this is a prime example of it uh absolutely love this card really really happy to have this in the collection uh and again just a really cool promo Next up, on the less beautiful end of things, <laughs> we have got Rakdos Guild Mage uh, from one of my favorite sets, uh, or blocks I should say. Original Ravnica was certainly one of my favorite blocks. Original Ravnica is my favorite set. Uh, and the Guild Mages are really cool cards. Uh, they've kind of stood the test of time of being able to just have cool abilities that are relevant in some strategies, maybe not all, uh, but they do have some relevant abilities, some of which are really, really powerful in my opinion. Uh, and so this is one of those cards that really shows that, you know, you've got the ability to discard a card, target creature gets minus two, minus two. Certainly not the most powerful thing in the world, uh, especially for four mana, but the reality is there are a lot of decks and a lot of strategies, especially in Commander, where you can really take advantage of that. Discarding a card is not a bad thing. Uh, and the reality is giving something minus two, minus two could deal with something that, while not the strongest creature, might have a powerful ability or something like that. Get it off the battlefield. And then, of course, for four with uh, three and a red, uh, you could put a 2-1 onto the battlefield with haste and then remove it from game at the from the game at the end of the turn. Again, something you can really capitalize on if you've got to enter, you know, whenever creatures enter the battlefield or leave the battlefield, you've got an ability. Uh, you can really stack this with that. Uh, and again, it's a 2-2 two, two for 2, so it's hybrid. You can get it wherever you need it. And I just love that. Uh, the art is obviously a little creepy, but I do love the promo art. I think having full art style cards like this it's just something that I really appreciate and not something that we always get uh, in today's promos. And so we do have a lot of like different versions of cards now, like showcase versions and stuff like that. And that's fine. Um, but something about these old school full arts just really speaks to me. And so uh, it's really nice to have this uh, Rakdos skill mage here. Hopefully we can pick up some more of these in the near future. Finally, we're coming to a couple of more interesting promos, in my opinion. Uh, first of which is Liliana's Triumph. This is actually a relatively new one from War of the Spark. Uh, instant for one and a black, each opponent sacrifices a creature. If you control Liliana Planeswalker, each opponent also discards a card. Obviously, a lot of interesting uh, value to this card. One is a beautiful one. Look at Liliana just doing her thing there with the, the dark magic. But, I mean, look at that beautiful foiling. You've got that full art. Uh, behind it, which is absolutely stunning. And truthfully, this is a useful card. We see this card gain uh, some play in certain decks. It's obviously not amazing, but I actually was watching uh, Channel Fireball Reed Duke the other day uh, playing a vintage deck, and I apologize because I don't remember what the deck was. Um, but he actually did have a Liliana's Triumph as a one-of, uh, which is kind of crazy to me to think Liliana's Triumph made it in Vintage. Uh, and it, it obviously is not a widespread card, so please keep that in mind. But uh, it is just a really cool card. The, the Sacrifice ability gets around a lot of protection issues and indestructible issues and things like that. Uh, and so it's actually a really good tech piece to have. And then, of course, if you do have a Liliana's Planeswalker, the added bonus of discarding a card is certainly worth it. So I uh, really do love this. I was happy to see, I didn't know this card existed, but I was happy to see that a more recent 
set like War of the Spark had such a beautiful promo. Definitely one I'm happy to have here. Uh, and I actually really liked War of the Spark, so this was a cool one to add to the binder. Finally, guys, we are coming to my absolute favorite promo of uh, today's binder update. And we have got Xur the Enchanter, the Judge Foil promo absolutely stunning artwork i mean this is one of my favorites this is another one of those commanders that i would really like to build with here very soon a one four for one and esper when it attacks you can search your library for an enchantment card with converted mana cost three or less and put it onto the battlefield if you do shuffle your library it also has flying a little bit of evasion there the reality is this is just a good commander we've seen a lot of great commander decks come out of Zer the enchanter obviously the build is pretty specific you're looking to get enchantments and so you build with a lot of tech pieces in the enchantment slot that you're hopefully able uh, to bring out with Zer the Enchanter as quickly as possible and kind of lock things down. Uh, very straightforward play pattern. However, a lot of tech pieces, a bit of a toolbox deck in that regard. Uh, and I really love that. I love toolbox decks. It's certainly one that I'm excited to have. Um, and truthfully, these Judge Foil promos, just as we saw last week with Hannah, Ship's, Ca uh, Ship's Navigator, I believe, uh, just a really cool, really, uh, really unique card to have the Judge Foil promo version of it. Uh, there's a little bit of value to this card as well, which is great. And that artwork, can we please just acknowledge how freaking cool that artwork is? That's amazing. I mean, I love OG Zer. I think it's a really cool kind of playful look at Zer. This is just menacing. This is just terrifying. <laughs> You've got that off kilter axis as well, which really kind of sets the stage for like, oh, okay, we're we're not feeling very comfortable around this guy. Uh, and it's just so cool. I, I absolutely love that. One of my favorite pieces of artwork in the game uh, and certainly a beautiful card to add to the binder. All right, guys, down to the last two, the first of which is a secret layer version of Desolate Lighthouse. There was a cycle of these. I miss a lot of the secret layers. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of most of them just because I feel like we're kind of overdoing it at this point with the secret layers. However, uh, this one did pop up and my goodness, I love the artwork. I mean, this is stunning. <laughs> Uh, the, the black and white theme here uh, is just absolutely beautiful. There is, like I said, a cycle of these, so you can pick up more than just the Desolate Lighthouse. Uh, but I really, really love this. I think the only thing that would have made it better is to have it in foil, but kind of glad they didn't because of the foil curling. Uh, and so for me, this was just a really awesome kind of black, black and white version of the card that I really, really love. I actually posted this uh, not too long ago and mentioned the fact that I just love Techlands. Techlands in general are something that uh, I think are very underrated in general. Uh, now, this one's not amazing by any means, but it's actually a relatively efficient one. Uh, and and long-term like control matchups and stuff, I think there's a lot of value to cards like this. And so uh, while it doesn't have a ton of monetary value, it is still a very cool card and a very good one to have. This is something that I would throw in a cube or throw in a, a blue-red like commander deck just to have that little extra tech piece of looting. Uh, and absolutely love the artwork. Just a beautiful, beautiful card. The contrast on this one. Oh, amazing. And finally, guys, I promised you the best token in Magic. Uh, there are a few that we could choose from, of course, but uh, guys, it's a sheep token. I mean, come on. It's the unglued sheep token. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, unglued came out, I don't actually remember when, uh, 1998, I believe I'm reading that correctly. Uh, Unglue was a very small set, but it was a joke set, so it was a spoof on the game. Uh, and as part of that, they did release a handful of tokens, one of which is this Silver Bordered Sheep token, uh, which is amazing. <laughs> I love that this exists. Uh, and so this actually did come up on the random Scryfall search, and I was just like, you know what? That's a card I have to have. And so I did pick one of these up. Uh, I'm excited because I'm really hoping I can get in that, that random Scryfall search. I would love to get some more of these and get that full cycle of tokens uh, because there are actually a number of them that are just really cool. Uh, and I mean, there's not much to say. It's just a cool sheep token. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I just really thought it was funny. Weirdly, though, these do hold a little bit more value than your average token, which is kind of cool, uh, just because it was the original kind of odd, oddball tokens uh, that you normally don't get to see. And so I really do love this. I think this is great. Uh, the Unglued set actually had a lot of cool stuff, including tokens, lands, even some individual cards that were really unique. Uh, and so this is a really happy one to, to have in the binder. It's just a funny one. Every time I turn to this page now, I'm just laughing, uh, which I'm excited to get to do once we finish up the binder collection but guys that's the full list of cards we're adding to today's deck or, or today's binder wow uh let's talk about this for a minute
All right, guys, so we have added another 12 cards to the binder. We should have reports added to the screen here to kind of give you an idea of where our binder value is at, as well as the completion aspect of the binder. I think we are at like 7.5%. Uh, we are getting there. I know we're only a few pages in, but it does help to add a lot of value each page. Uh, and we've got a lot of awesome new cards to show you guys in the next uh, couple weeks here. We have really been adding a lot to it. And so uh, I am very excited for this series. Again, guys, please, please 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 share your collection stories if you've recently picked up a card that you are so excited about you can't wait to share that story leave it in the comment section below this is the forum for that this is the place where i want everybody to feel comfortable sharing whatever stories they have about their collection about the individual cards they love to collect maybe you picked up a whole deck maybe you picked up another collection maybe you bought a full collection share some of the highlights from that i would really appreciate it it's great to be able to collect with you guys to share with you guys what we are doing uh and like i said in multiple previous episodes collecting is near and dear to my heart this is the core of the game for me uh, I know it's different for everybody, but this is something that is really, really special uh, and something that I'm very, very happy to share with you guys. So thank you all so much. Uh, again, thank you all for watching. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. If you do like the video, it really helps us with the algorithm. So help us out there. Uh, and guys, make sure you're subscribed. I love you all very, very much. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will see you next week for some more collection updates. We'll see you then.